going on geek and game Jeremy Bandigood here back with another video and today I'm going to be going over the 10 absolute worst movies that were based on geek culture. Now these films have all received critical and commercial notoriety as being a mix of a terrible film and a terrible adaptation from their source material and they have a range of video games, anime, and cartoons in here that were beloved by many but were turned into absolute atrocities. With that out of the way, let's get right into it. Number 10, Street Fighter The Legend of Chun-Li. Now this film was released in 2009 to very little fanfare. This film attempted to tell the story of Chun-Li and her association with Street Fighter. The story wasn't told very well, coupled with the fact that there are plenty of non-canon information in this film that confused audiences and left them with more questions than answers. Strictly speaking from a film perspective, this movie didn't have the feel of an authentic feature-length film, and almost felt like a final project by a couple of kids in film school. Upon its release, this film received a 3.7 on IMDb, a 17% on Metacritic, and a whopping 5% on Rotten Tomatoes. Woof. Maybe don't, uh, try to explore story in Street Fighter. You're gonna have a bad time. Number 9, Assassin's Creed. Now, I'll be honest, before making this list, I had no idea this movie even existed. And in my research, I learned that I wasn't alone. It seems that this movie's biggest enemy from the beginning was marketing. I'm not saying that had the marketing team been bigger and had a bigger budget, the movie would do any better, but if the marketing team was bigger and had a bigger budget, the movie definitely would have done better. Even so, the plot for this film was incredibly confusing to fans of the source material, as instead of using an already established character in the universe, or from the games even, the filmmakers created a new take on the story using unique characters in the setting of the Spanish Inquisition. Congratulations guys, that is the absolute perfect way to get absolutely nobody in the world excited for your movie. GG. Number 8, Warcraft. Now this film is probably the most mixed on this list, with some fans actually feeling that the film was a good adaptation. The main issue with this film was that it attempted to introduce the entire world uh, of Warcraft <laughs> in just about a 90 minute feature length film. If they were going to do this and have it be successful, this ambitious project needed to be divided up into bite-sized chunks in more of a cinematic universe type style, in my view. That way, you could get the kind of story you want from one, hop over to the next, and there's no kind of cramming for information in just one film. Despite the fact that Blizzard Entertainment actually helped work on this film, this one still got a 27% on Rotten Tomatoes, but achieved a 6.8 on IMDb. Good job, guys! Your movie gets thrown in the not-completely-garbage pile and into the things-I'm-never-gonna-look-at-again pile. Number 7, Doom. Now, this is one of those movies where I question where it could've really gone wrong. In stark contrast to the previous entry on this list, Doom is the simplest concept possible that you could've turned into a film. Just a dude running around, shooting aliens and monsters, that's it. How could you possibly screw this up? Oh, oh, I see. You add way too many story elements and take the simplicity out of the property. Sure, yeah, that'll work. This film was just too damn in-depth. It's insane. You know what the main character's mother had for breakfast this morning? Well, this film tells you it's so in-depth that way. It just, it has no right to be. Just have a guy trapped in a random facility, fighting for his life, make him look kinda like Doom Guy, and you're on your way. Stop trying to make an action movie, damn it! Make a video game movie! Number 6, Final Fantasy The Spirits Within. Wait a minute, wait a minute, wait a minute. 83% of Google users like this movie? Are you serious? Look at that animation! I mean, look at it! Have you seen Heavenly Sword? Have you seen Food Fight? Because this is the level of animation that we're talking about, people. Jesus. Imagine this. You get greenlit to make a movie about Final Fantasy. You're deciding what kind of animation style it should have. Should it have a realistic approach? Should it have a JRPG approach? Should it have a generic, modern-at-the-time video game cutscene engine? We'll go with that one! Honestly, I can't stand this kind of animation because it feels like you're just watching a video game cutscene for 90 minutes. Pro tip movie, gamers don't like watching cutscenes. They like playing the game. 
Don't give us a 90 minute cutscene as a movie. We don't want it. But apparently, 83% of Google users disagree with me. <sighs> Am I out of touch? No, it's the Google users who are wrong. Number five, Prince of Persia, The Sands of Time. Oh, hey, look, it's Jake Gyllenhaal. I forgot he was in this movie. I guess add him to the list of people who got a second chance with geek culture films because his role as Mysterio in Far From Home was awesome. Going back to this film, though, this is another one of those movies that the filmmakers clearly didn't know the source material in which they were deriving from, and as an end result, made a story that just didn't resonate with fans. I'll give the movie credit though, had this been a movie with a similar story to Prince of Persia and had been named something different, it probably would have done a lot better because the actual film elements in this movie aren't really that bad at all. It's nice as a film, but as a Prince of Persia film, it doesn't quite do it justice. Number four, Death Note. Oh baby, I've been waiting to open this can of worms because holy crap have I got some floodgates I want to open. For one, Light Yagami has been killed because of this movie. This movie butchered him. Light is a character that is smart, collected, selfish, sadistic, and a self-proclaimed pariah. In this movie, oh my god. He is the most cowardly and scared piece of human garbage since Chucky from the Rugrats, but at least Chucky did it in a way that was cute, and he overcame his character's flaw because of his other cast members. Light here isn't the god he is made out to be in the anime and the manga. That is the lifeblood of the property. Light believes he is a god and doing god's work. That's why the anime and the manga were so successful, but they ripped it away here. Why? This ruins the entire story, because the plot of the original Death Note was this amazing chess match between Light and L because of their shared confidence, intellect, and cunning. Here, it's just a slog, and I don't ever want to watch this piece of garbage again. Ugh, I just don't want it to- oh wait, 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 I, I, I do have one, I do have one good thing. I have to give credit where it's due. The one good thing that this movie does, completely right, in fact, I'm not even sure I've ever seen anything more right in my life, was casting Willem Dafoe as Ryuk. Like, holy crap, that was the most spot-on casting decision I've ever seen. But this movie was garbage, and I hate it for that. It gave me such a good thing. And then it's like, I'm gonna be garbage, and there's nothing you can do about it. <sighs> Number three, The Last Airbender. My boy! What did you do to my boy? M. Night Shyamalan is the devil. I'll say it. I'll back it up. I'll, I'll, I'll always say it. He cared so little about the project that he was working on, he didn't even bother to pronounce the main character's first name correctly. He couldn't pronounce Aang's first name. He he, he just didn't do it. He, he listened to his actor mispronounce the name and did nothing. It's like the conversation between the head of the project and Shyamalan to direct the movie went, yeah, it's about a kid named Aang who can control elements. Oh, okay, Aang can control elements. Yes, Aang... Aang, Aang, he, he, can control elements. Oh, okay, got it. Aang um, can control the elements. Like, what the hell, man? If you're gonna make a film based on an extremely popular franchise, maybe don't literally shoot yourself in the foot by showing the audience you don't care in the first five minutes of the film. Just, just a thought there, Shyamalan. Just get your head out of your ass. Number two, Dragon Ball Evolution. Now, this adaptation reminds me of the epic rap battles of history where Ray William Johnson plays Goku. I don't know why, but the similarity is uncanny though. It might just be the whitewashing in this movie. In another attempt at telling their own story, this film attempted to modernize the property and make the stakes so much lower by having the main characters interact and fight with random people in contrast to always training to get better. You know, their entire character motivations in the anime. I just don't get this one. People like Dragon Ball for the big fight sequences and the awesome showcasing of power, but here, it's just another martial arts tournament where nothing is at stake and we don't care about the characters at all. 
Sorry, Goku, but not even your awesome, cool, spiky hair and yelling for three episodes straight can save this one. Alright, real quick, as a quick aside, I'm gonna put an epilepsy warning up before I go into number one because the trailer that I'm about to show has a lot of flashy lights, uh, as was per, you know, the 80s and earlier and things of that nature. So epilepsy warning here, uh, you have been warned, and now into number one. And number one, Super Mario Brothers. I think we all saw this one coming. This one is such a stain on the video game community that it's just one of those films nobody mentions anymore and just wants to forget even happened. I swear, it's like the filmmakers didn't even try here. Why mobsters? Why all the story? Why anything? This film was actually so bad that both of the actors who played Mario and Luigi respectively have come out and said that these roles were the absolute worst of their careers. Both of their careers. And it's easy to see why. There's just nothing of substance here, and it just feels like a massive waste of time. Still though, it makes for a good collector's item, sitting on a shelf, collecting dust, never to be watched again. I'm never opening you again, Mario Brothers. I'm not doing it. Unless you're a video game, I'm not doing it. So that's my list, guys. I hope you enjoyed. If you have any other films that I might have missed, be sure to leave them in the comments section below. I'd love to read them and uh, get even more sad than I did when making this video. And if you liked what you saw here, be sure to hop on over to my YouTube channel and give that thing a big ol' subscribe. Thanks so much, guys, and I'll see you all next time.